spare its suffering, what people want not to be. Me, not I'm not talking. Let, let me finish. 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 Sit down. May we ask the next question? But I'll question? come back to the facts now, since you are unable to deal with them. 800,000 Palestinians, according to Israeli historians, beginning with B Benny Morris, with Ilan Pape, all of them. Yes. Expelled by force of arms, according to the statements of the Israeli, of the Zionist military archives, including Rabin, including Ben Gurion, including Alon, including Diane, all of them wanted to get rid of the Palestinians, and they did. Okay. Now, second, having, we're. I forgot what the second and third point. Okay, equally, so, equally fraudulent. Okay, so now we we're going to oscillate. Side to side, I believe the gentleman at the front here no doubt has yes. learnt the, the again the lesson speaking. of brief question asking. Yes, please, I don't need to be reminded. Uh, professor, would you mind uh, basically commenting on the, the plight of the Armenian people vis-a-vis -vis the injustices the Turkish government perpetrated and continues to deny the Armenian rights, expelling them from their homeland and make a parallel of what you talked about, the Palestinian and the Israeli state, vis-a-vis -vis Israel and the United States being political and military well, allies we, of Turkey. Thank you. Yes. Well, it's, well, of course, the Armenians were subject to uh, genocide by the Turks uh, in the early part of the 20th century. I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long and complex subject, but it still hasn't been recognized by the Turkish government nor by this government, as it turns out, nor, as it also turns out, by the Israeli government, uh, which has reserved the right for the word genocide to only to be applied to the killing of Jews uh, in the Second World War. Uh, now, I think there's a, very common, there's a very common fate which explains the presence of many Palestinians, uh, of many uh, Armenians in Palestine who came there for refuge, Arab Palestine, I might say, uh, and who came to other countries uh, as a result of the Armenian massacres, uh, including Lebanon and Syria and Egypt. So I think there is, there is a great sense of uh, affinity and commonality between Palestinians and Armenians in that both suffered the, the dispossession and uprootedness uh, that uh, came as a consequence of governmental policy. Okay, so thank you. Next question over here um, to my left. Hi, Dr. Saeed. Uh, my name is uh, Samir Atwer. My question is, what is your solution for the current situation in Palestine, and how can we stop this monster war criminal area, Sharon? Well, I was earlier asked by this gentleman, uh, the speech maker, the earlier chap, to say whether I would sign a paper or something with him. I won't, I, because I, the only paper I'll sign right now is the end of occupation. That should end, in the, and it's entirely, that's in, and I think it's entirely significant that in all the tirade of falsehoods and, uh, and half-truths that he delivered, he didn't one mench, once mention the, the illegal settlement that have confiscated almost 40% of Palestinian land and with the roads taken over about 60% of Palestinian land. So the only solution is to continue to struggle against, resist, against occupa military occupation 35 years old, to struggle against the implantation of settlements and to awaken the consciousness of a people who have been threatened and bludgeoned by the kind of propaganda that we were subjected to here to deny the truth of what is happening. But this is a savage war of oppression and national effacement by Israel against the Palestinians. And until that fact is faced and stopped by us in America, we have it in our power because the only way that susta what sustains Israel, aside from propaganda, is of course the vast military, political and economic support it gets from the United States. When are we going to stop? Okay, thank you very much. The next question is to my right. Uh, ironically enough, uh, I'm an Armenian too, but I will approach it from another position. Uh, we are dealing with uh, populations who are being demonized by 
uh, occupiers. I feel that as an Armenian because I am the descendant of uh, the, the genocide. But on the other hand, we are also having, we are also speaking about the people who was the, who was victimized and demonized, and was and are the descendants, the descendants of the Holocaust. Right. I remember Professor Said about one and a half decades ago. Question. People like you, Hanan Ashrawi, uh, Hanna Signora, the dialogue that was going to go on between the populations. The third point was very positive, but you didn't dwell on it. I think your talk today is more militaristic, and is that a frustration? Uh, no, it's not militaristic. I, I, no, no, please. As academics, no, thank you. can we, please, please. Can we dwell please, more? Don't, don't, thank you. I think you asked the question. I, mean, I get thank your you. point, but let me, let me answer because there's very little time. First of all, everything I said is deeply opposed to militarism. I mean, there, there, is, there is no military solution, and that's why I was as vociferous as I was in opposing uh, Israeli military means of trying to blot out Palestinian life. I don't know where you got this idea of militarism, but it's not that at all. That's number one. Number two, there cannot be a dialogue between people who are totally unequal. The Israelis control the entire area of Palestine with the total and unconditional support of the United States. What, what are Palestinians supposed to dialogue with them about? To make them feel better? The only dialogue is the dialogue that they should leave. They should withdraw. They should end their military occupation. And I oppose military occupation just as I oppose military means. I don't think there's a military solution. I think some form of coexistence will have to take place. But I insist, finally, if you could just let me continue. I insist finally that coexistence must be between equals. There cannot be a sense that one people has more rights than another on the land of two people. Thank you. I think we probably have time only for two more questions. One on this side, one on the other side, and I'm afraid that'll have to be the end of our, the formal proceedings. Yes. The woman in the, the blue top here. My name is Esther Kandel. I'm an alumnus of UCLA and a product of Columbia. My question for you, two quick ones. Why did you not mention B'Tselem? The Hebrew word for B'Tselem means in the image of God. That is an Israeli-based human rights committee that focuses primarily on Palestinian viola human rights violations on the heart part of Israelis by Israelis. I didn't hear any mention of that. You said specifically... There are a lot, excuse me, there are a lot of things I didn't mention. Okay, I'm sorry. But you said specifically... I didn't mention the Committee Against House Demolitions. I didn't mention did. B'Tselem. I didn't... Okay. No, I didn't. I didn't mention the Rabbis for Human Rights. I didn't mention Ta'ayush. I mean, there are lots of things okay, I didn't next. mention. So please... I mean, it's I'm not a laundry quick. list. I'm making it quick. I'm making it quick. When you refer to the UN, which I heard you refer to several times with regards to the war on Iraq, right. yet you refer to in the, the independence of Israel, which was given to the, the right by the UN, the UN gave Israel that right. You refer to it as Al Nakba, the catastrophe. That's right. That's right. Refer to it correctly as the UN did. No, it's not but correct. It's, you, have, you can't have it both ways. Well, I mean, okay. sorry. You know, thank you. The the result, result, let's let's let I, Professor Saeed uh, respond to this. May, may I respond? I'm sorry. The, the, uh, the destruction of Palestinian society followed on as a result, not of a UN resolution, but of a war of attack upon Palestinian, the Palestinian press. Please, let me finish. Don't, don't do that. It doesn't help your case at all by just reasserting propaganda cliches. It, it came about as a result of a war, the war of 1948, in which Palestinians were kicked out. And they remain dispossessed and kicked out to this day. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Excuse me, could we just have a little decorum for a couple more minutes? Last question over here on the left. I'm sorry, this will have to be the last question. Standing over here, I would sir, please take a seat. Please take a seat. Yeah. Okay. I, I have two questions, but they're very short. They better be very short. Okay. Um, I'm. My name is Gali Bonet. I'm an Israeli Jew, and um, I'm strongly against the occupation. But, but at the same time, I've experienced the fear of exploding in a bus and in a coffee shop and places like that. And I want to ask you, what do we do about terrorism? This is a real problem for both people. Yes, I agree with you. I'm, I've 
taken many public positions against suicide.